Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everyone to our GI knowledge sessions. These are a series of talks and seminars that are fueled by GI's decades of research. And you know, we're so lucky to be able to study and learn from GEMS and it's our mission to share all of our discoveries and learnings with the world. So I'm really excited to kick things off today. I'm Kelly Giordano, a member of the content team here at GIA. And I'm joined by Dr. Tao Su, uh, Director of Global Professional Development for GI Education. And she's gonna tell us all about how we take all this GI research and use it to design our curriculum. So before we get started, uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. Everyone attending this is automatically muted. Uh, if you do have a question, please use the Q&A feature you'll see at the bottom of your screen. We'd love for you to ask questions as you go, and there will be a Q&A session at the end where Tao can answer some of our questions. Uh, we will also be sending a follow-up email with a recording of this session, and that email will have a survey in it, so we'd love to hear your feedback. And with that, I'm going to pass you over to Tao. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm so happy that you are here today with me uh, because that tells me that you're interested in GIA education. And maybe you are considering taking some formal gemology education to um, be competitive in this trade. So today we will go over how we make uh, the GIA gemology curriculum. Get the slide move. So GIA research, not just for scientists. Um, we use a lot of these research results in our education offerings as well. And strictly speaking, uh, research is the lab research. When we talk about research, people usually think about uh, scientists in lab coats and doing some research in laboratories. Uh, but broadly speaking, GIA's research actually include many different facets. And I will uh, lead you to go over these major sources that we um, get our gemology content from today. So this is about how we use research and also the treat resources to make uh, the GIA courses. Okay. Uh, so let's travel back to 1930 when GIA was formed. It actually started with education um, before the lab formed even. And when Mr. Robert Shipley and his wife formed the Gemological Institute of America, uh, he first signed a contract with USC, University of Southern California. And he offered them to give this 12 lesson short course, which is a preliminary or introductory level gemology course for one of their evening adult education programs. This is how GIA education started actually. Uh, the lecture he gave was very successful because back then most of the jewelers didn't realize that they could take some formal gemology education to differentiate themselves with their competitors. Just nobody realized that. Um, but his lecture, his first ever lecture was very well attended. <laughs> it was way beyond his expectation. Uh, so ever since that, GIA had generations of uh, course development teams and we inherited all this great content from the Mr. what Mr. Shipley had back then. And we started to accumulate more and more content from our research team from the trade contacts. And GIA courses are also being revised cycle. Um, we have a re revisions period. So every two to three years, we're going to have to update the course to keep it alive. So let's take our most prestigious certificate, the graduate gemologist certificate, as an example. So these are the things that you're going to learn from before you can get this diploma. So you will learn about the physical chemical properties of diamonds and color stones. But that's not enough. If you can just identify the stones, that's also not enough. 
you will have to uh, keep updating yourself on the treatments that are happening these days in the market, the synthetics, the imitations. And now, even with the market information, the market trend, the whole supply chain, what is happening these days? These are all important information that will help you to sell. So in this course, we see part of the content can be quite stable and we can use this content forever. Things like the properties of the stones, the RI of the stones, the SG of the stones and how you identify the stone. These are relatively stable for every gemology course, you will learn this, but there are also parts of the course that are quite dynamic and because the trade keeps changing, keeps evolving. So the course has to be evolving at the same time. And we try to keep you updated on the newest information and the reliable information that you can deliver to your customers. So uh, then you must be wondering, where do we get this content from? So, these are the four major sources of our gemology course content or educational content. Um, research, which here um, goes back to the strictly defined research is the lab research our research scientists do in GIA, at, actually at multiple locations of GIA. And field gemology, which is part of the research and we had a lot of collaborations between GIA education and GIA research to do field gemology. And I will talk to you, I'll show you examples, uh, how we work in the field, what we are collecting content wise. And then another, another important aspect is the treat study. Uh, so I like the language that we use in the promotion of this webinar. Gemology is part science part art and part business. And depending on your needs, you can sequence these three differently. Um, but trait study is also very important because uh, we wanna show you as much as possible like how other people out there are doing their business. So these are not rocking signs, like you don't have to follow what we present in our course, but these are very inspiring inspiring that can give you ideas what you can do, what you can do differently than these people. And the fourth one is uh, publication. So GIA has our own publication. We have the Journal of Jemson, Jemson Gemology, which is a quarterly journal. And we use a lot of content from this publication. And GIA website is another great resource I mean, a lot of you probably go to GIA website to read the articles. The field research articles especially are attractive to many of you. So we use content from our website, our journal, and definitely we will use content from other publications as well. So now we'll go over each and see what we do exactly. The CGI has a really long history of research. And I mean, for any research institutions, uh, as you might already know, research and education always go hand in hand. So research is the source to keep education alive. And this photo shows you Mr. Liddicote. And you might all know that he is probably the most famous gemology educator but he was also a leader for GIA research. And this image was taken in 1946. He was back then um, assigned as the director of GIA research. And he was looking at our, uh, one of the early versions, the diamond scope here. So GIA research and GIA education has been intertwined for quite a long time. And we have a work class research team. This team is mainly predominantly composed of uh, PhDs with different research backgrounds. Um, these are people from geology, from chemistry, physics, 
and some even studied uh, diamond physics specifically. Um, so GIA invested heavily on the team and on the instruments that they used to do their research. And on this slide, you see both Evans, Dr. Evan Smith and Dr. Karen Schmidt, both are our diamond geologists. And during the past five years, there were several major breakthroughs on diamond formation study. And both played a really important role in this research. And you will see this research in our updated diamond, diamonds and diamond grading course, uh, which we are in the process of doing the revision now. Uh, so you will hear me talking a lot about uh, how we update the diamond course because this is what we are doing now. We already updated the color stone course. Uh, so I will give you examples through the whole webinar. And some of the instruments they use, um, I mean, some of them are specially designed for the gem and jewelry trade, such as Diamond View, um, which is a commonly, you commonly hear about this instrument. Uh, and some other instruments are not designed or commonly used for gemology study, but GIA also invest in this type of instruments, which will help with basic research of diamond formation, diamond physics. So what Dr. Karen Schmidt is using the right side image here is a scanning electron microscope, which is commonly used uh, in geology, uh, which allows you to see a lot of details inside the mineral and mineral inclusions. And even for some conventional uh, research, such as inclusion study, this has a long history. And it's one thing you know, easier to assess with, by beginners. And with all these you know, amazing, fascinating uh, photo micrographs, uh, a lot of students actually firstly got into gemology because they love this type of images. They just attract them. Um, so even for this type of research, I mean, GIA also invested in more modern, um, more advanced devices to allow us even stronger capability to do this type of research. And our research scientists also not just only doing research in the lab, they also go out to different uh, academic conferences uh, or even trade shows, trade events to give talks. And you have the opportunity to hear some of them directly uh, at this type of events. And what we do with them is uh, we will also talk to them. You know, we form a relationship with them. And we need to get familiar what, with what they study, what their expertise is, and then be familiar with their research results and let them talk about all of this. Later, I will summarize all of this. So in addition to our research scientist team, we also have a very good team of practitioners. Um, these staff are at the front line of gem identification. And this include everything, the diamonds, the pearls, and the color stones. They are of a lot of experience. They see all these strange things coming to the lab, the you know, hard to decide identifications every day. So we also rely on these people quite a lot. And we talk to them and they usually, they will also write um, short entries for our journal. So actually the four sources I mentioned earlier, they are also interconnected with each other. So I cannot really separate them out by each. Uh, so people from the research team, from the practitioner team, also write articles for the publication. And I can get the content directly from them or from the publication. So these are all interconnected. But these people are very experienced and they can also show the students, if we want them to be on camera, to show the students how to run the instruments and they can often do a very good job. And you will possibly see some of these videos in your revised courses. And after people, people is the most important. I have to also mention our world-class research samples. 
Um, these are not samples used directly by our students body, but um, these are used mainly by the research scientists. So in some of our seminars, those specially designed seminars that fulfilling, you know, very specific goals, uh, it's possible for you to see some of this work class research samples as well. For example, the left image shows you our field gemology collection. These are color stones we, our field gemologists collected over the past decade from all over the world. And they use this samples every day to study the country of origin, the, you know, through the chemistry of these stones. Um, so we are also in the process of designing a seminar of country of origin that possibly we're going to use some of these samples in those seminars so you will have the opportunity to see them as well and for diamond research needless to say we have probably the best uh, sample selection in this world because uh, every day thousands or tens of thousands of diamonds go through gia laboratories and um, some of the stones are very interesting and our research scientists had the opportunity to look at stones, not always like that one on the right side, not always that big, but these are interesting stones that can give the research scientists clues about what they are studying exactly. And in addition to GIA research scientists, we also get help from outside research scientists. This is Dr. Sherry, uh, Steve Sherry from the Carnegie Institution of Science, who is one of the most famous, one of the authorities of diamond geology. And he worked together with some of our research science scientists, especially Dr. Evan Smith and Karen Schmidt. Um, they worked together quite a lot. Uh, so for the past five years, they published uh, several important papers, not in GIA publication, but in science and nature. These are two of the most important and most prestigious academic journals in this world. So what they found in those papers, you will also see in our updated diamonds and diamond grading course. Uh, so this time, when you study diamond formation, the theories got expanded quite a lot. So to summarize what we do with the, our research, our research scientists and our practitioners in the lab, we first, uh, we have a team. So I personally lead a subject matter expert team to focus on you know, making the geology, uh, the gemology curriculum. So first, we need to form the connection with them. And we need to familiarize ourselves with their research. So we have to read their articles, we have to go to their talks, and talk to them directly. And we also gave them the chance to talk about their own research. And we document it. So we always prefer that the information is directly from the source. Uh, to avoid any you know, misinterpretation in between. Uh, so whenever we have the opportunity and when the time and the resource allowed us, we will have the scientists to talk on the camera and we're gonna use those videos in our course as well. Uh, so if you enroll in on-campus program, sometimes you will see this type of video in your classroom presentation. And if you are taking the distant learning, program, uh, you have even more media content like this. Um, so what this picture shows is before, right before the pandemic this year, we, because we were updating the diamond course, we actually interviewed uh, Choi Arden, uh, one of our research scientists in the Carlsbad lab. And he talked about several routinely used advanced instrumentations in diamond identification. Uh, so he will give you the principles of these devices and what they are mainly used for in terms of uh, figuring out the diamond's identity. So you will see these videos in your new course as well. 
and are research scientists, so they contribute directly or indirectly to the content to support our curriculum. Uh, so they can talk on the camera and they can write articles and they even go to the classroom, it's possible, or give a talk directly to the students while they're on campus. So now with you know, social distancing, we have done this quite a lot through this type of webinars. Though so we have had over 10 webinars on different topics and these are all were almost exclusively given directly by our research scientists. And the next one, and this is this one is the most interesting, and uh, I know many of you like the field gemology program that GIA has. Um, we went to many trips together with the field gemologists, and what we do as um, education subject matter experts is we went to these sources, and then the first thing we usually did is to investigate the deposit. Um, so you could read articles, uh, look at images from the internet or other publications about these deposits, but it's always good if you can go there and look at it in person and document it in person. Such as the left image, we were uh, at the Kajan Man, uh, Emerald Mine in Zambia. And we were with their chief uh, geologist back then, Robert Gessner, down in the underground mine, down in the tunnel. And he showed us the, the veins and the host rocks and the emerald, you know, crystallized in the reaction zone between these two regimes. Uh, and the right side image is our field gemologist, um, Dr. Aaron Palpe and Wim Bertrist uh, in Greenland studying that ruby deposit. Uh, and what we also need to do, uh, this is a little bit different than what the field gemologists will do. So um, they will look at the stones. They will, because they're gonna buy stones as samples back to GIA to enrich our um, sample set. So they look at the stones, so they have their own criteria how you know, what to buy, what not to buy. And they study the stones right in the field. And as subject matter experts, we need to focus on, you know, is how the people evaluate the stones. You know, how they separate them into, sort them into different groups. What this value adding process does for the later sales. So we focus on so slightly different subjects, but we will do it at the same time through talking to the owners of the business and whoever we visited. So such as the, the left image is showing you Dr. Aaron Palki was looking at some demand toys uh, during a Thailand trip. He was in Chanterbury. And the right side image is our Pearl Research Group, part of our Pearl Research Group. Uh, and educational staff, we went to Tennessee together and they were looking at natural freshwater pearls. This is also an important part of our field trip. And whenever we have the chance or we are allowed, we would always like to see the treatments being done on the stones. Uh, and thankfully, uh, there are, I mean, this treatment have been quite secretive in the trade. I mean, it has been there for a long time, but you rarely bump into people that are very open to this, to you, and let you videotape, and let you talk to them about the process, let, let you see the process. So whenever we have a chance, we will do this, no question. So the leftmost image shows you that tanzanite after treatment. This, was, this image was taken in Jaipur, India. And the middle image and the right side image, we took them from uh, the Jet Mountain mine in Montana, which is a sapphire mine in Montana. Uh, Chris was really nice, the owner of Jet Mountain mine. He also does a sapphire treatment. And he showed us, he actually hosted us for two days and we witnessed the whole process, two rounds of heating of the sapphire's mind from Montana. 
um, and me and Shane, we were looking at the stones after the blue burn. So he had two runs, uh, two runs, one to change the stones to fancy color and one to change them to blue, try to change them to blue color. And after the blue run, we were looking at the stones. So in our course, the updated color stone course, you will see very detailed presentation of the treatment that we witnessed in Montana. And what else we do, we also investigate the products, uh, which usually <laughs> are the stones because we went to sources quite a lot. Uh, we also went to local markets such as that one in Myanmar. And we look at how the dealers, how the sellers sell their stone. Uh, how they bargain with each other. I mean, these are more of the cultural interests that we want to show the students. And the right side image was uh, taken in Australia. We went to Quilpie in Queensland, Australia, uh, which is a famous boulder oboe source. And we went to the store with our contact and he showed us the whole inventory he has in the store. And we also ask questions like, what's your customer base? And how's the sales going? You know, we try to get much information from the owner of the store as well. And this will also go to the course. Uh, we are selective. We're not like giving every teeny weeny details <laughs> of what we documented, but we'll be selective. We'll see uh, what are the the better information that will be helpful to our students and we put them into the course. So one super important thing that we do in the field is to document. We document everything. Um, our videographers are the heroes behind the scenes here. <laughs> you see how hard they work in the field. Um, the left image, again, we were in Montana um, next to Missouri River, uh, that's a, another secondary deposit of sapphire in Montana. And we usually, if we go to mines, we'll document their mining process, the whole process from the extraction of the ore to the washing, uh, to the uh, extraction of the stones and even evaluation of the stones, if they do that at the mine set. Uh, and the right side images, uh, the team went to Tennessee and our videographer was with us on the boat and we had a diver dive down to the river and collected some muscles for us. Um, and he was recording it. Dr. Chung Hui Zhou was holding the muscles. And we'll try to record everything as much as we can. And everybody will have camera with them and photos everywhere. So, you know, when I put this presentation together, it was a little bit hard to find photos we, uh, of us working <laughs> because there are plenty of photos of the stones of the process, but it's actually quite hard to find uh, when people are in action, when people are documenting the process. So I tried my best to put a presentation together with some of these photos. And I also want to give credit to these people that are working so hard in the field. Uh, they are an important part of the curriculum making as well. So, um, you know, we also, we are so grateful that our trip contacts, uh, whenever we went for these trips, there was always a nice host that took us around, you know, introduced us to the owners of bit local uh, business owners and introduce us to the trade, local trade. So we want to interview them. We want to also give them the chance to talk on camera. And that's also like a, usually by the end of the day um, and at the beginning of the trip, by the end of the trip, um, we will have our host interviewed right in the field. Um, so the left image is when we went to Australia, uh, Mr. Terry Coatham, uh, who is very well known in the trade, and he probably spent the last maybe nearly 50 years working with Australian Sapphire. Um, we inter he took us around for the whole two-week trip. He took us around the whole country. 
Uh, we look at opal deposits, we look at uh, sapphire deposits, and we interviewed him at multiple locations during the trip. And the right side image, we were in Russia. Um, this one was at um, one of the two major Dementoid mines. And we were interviewing our local contact and the mine owner at the same time. And of course, we recorded everything. And moving to the next source, trade leverage. This is another super important source uh, for gemology content. And there are so many nice uh, you know, businessmen, businesswomen in this trade that opened their door to us over the years. Um, so, you know, we do similar things. We kind of talk to them and we form the connection with them. And then we need to familiarize ourselves with their expertise, their business. And we will also give them the opportunity to talk on camera directly to the students, to our audience. And it doesn't have to be students. If we use the material in publication, there is actually a way broader audience out there to see this. So they are all very open, very nice to us. Uh, they show us their stone collections, they talk about their experience in the business. And we're so grateful that we have been allowed to witness many of these uh, businesses and processes. Uh, so they also contribute directly and indirectly to our course uh, content. Now, this image, I have to say, talk about this. Uh, this is also in Tennessee. And we went to visit the Latangas family. Um, as if you are familiar with pearls, you might know the name. The name might click with you. Um, Gina Latangas, the lady there, um, her father was the first one to culture freshwater pearl in North America. Um, so when we were there, she showed us their collection. These are in the tray there. Uh, these are all freshwater natural pearls, and these are all museum quality pieces. So she took that out, and this is the three generation of the family, the mom, daughter, and the granddaughter, um, talk about their collection in front of our camera. Uh, and we tried to document the whole supply chain. We talked a lot about the sources. And we go to field, uh, field gemology trips. Uh, we go to the sources directly. But we want to give you a complete picture of the whole supply chain from the source to the manufacturing to the retail sector. Um, at least this three big, the upper stream, middle stream, and the downstream sector. And there are many variants within each sector. So we want to show you the whole spectrum, even within each sector. So for example, these two images here, um, when our team went to Jaipur, India, we documented a lot of this cutting process with people, cutters, using very traditional tools. And when we visited Surat, India, uh, Mumbai, India, for uh, in those large diamond cutting factories, we also want to document what the modern day large scale diamond cutting factory looks like. Uh, you know, we also try to um, record the important skills or techniques that are in you know, inherited from our previous generations and st are still popular in this trade today. And we want to also record them partially because, you know, for a lot of these techniques and skills, um, many people we interviewed, they informed us that young people, there are less and less young people that can devote themselves into this type of techniques and skills developing process. Um, because this is very difficult and very hard and took a long time to develop all these skills. Um, so this is also, you know, we want to record them just um, for the future generation to be able to see this. And the left image we were with Glenn Lair, who is a very well known 
uh, gem cover in our trade. And he won multiple and many awards of gem carving. And he worked together with a lot of famous designers, such as Paula Cravache. Um, so we went to his studio uh, for a couple of days, and he showed us his working conditions, his tool collection, which is amazing to see a professional gem covers tool collection. It's all over the place in the studio. And he cut stones right in front of our camera. He explained the philosophy, the planning of the cutting. And he here, he was showing us how to polish a piece, a, a car, carved piece. It's very hard to reach a lot of the areas, the grooves uh, of the carved gem pieces. And the right side is, um, we, when we went to China, uh, we visited a lot of jade carving factories. And in this factory, their artists were working on planning the carving. So they, they are artists, true artists. They put a 2D painting on the jade piece first and then change this 2D uh, image to a 3D carving later. So we try to also record this type of things to show the students. And we talk to the business owners and these are people often have decades of experience in that specific area of the trade. And they gave us, they shared, generously shared with us a lot of insights based on their experience. And they also talk about their niche market. For example, the right side image here, um, this gentleman was talking about um, how he recut fancy color diamonds and how can this be pro profitable. Um, and what process he used to do this. So this will be in your new diamond course as well. And we also went to those buying events and you know, trade shows. This was in Myanmar. Uh, a while back, I gave a talk uh, about the gem emporium in Myanmar and how to evaluate rough jadeite. So we talked to the buyers at this type of events and they are, you know, most people are really generous to, to us. Uh, there is no hesitation for them to show us what are the tips they use to buy the stones. The lady on the, in the left image there, she was there to buy um, culture pearls, culture South Sea pearls, and he gave us some tips like how, what type of pearls she was looking for, how can she take a, a pearl with relatively low purchasing price and change it to, uh, uh, to make more profit. And the right side was our contact that showed us a lot of the tips about uh, how to evaluate Jade at Rough. And we're so grateful for their contribution as well. And we also go to stores, the selling. So now we move from the upstream, middle stream to the downstream of the value chain. Uh, we have to go to the selling channels, uh, jewelry stores, such as the one in India to the left there. Indian people really like jewelry. They have the passion for jewelry and even for little kit. <laughs> and the right side image is our colleague visited uh, jewelry TV, uh, which is a quite different way to do business. And uh, we also documented the process, how they live selling their stones on TV. And we went to little shops like this little jewelry store in Shanghai, right at the center of Shanghai, which is selling mostly jade pieces. Uh, and the store in a big store in Mumbai that we interviewed the store owner, the manager there to talk about their strategy, their inventory philosophy, and their customer base and the market trends they see in the Indian domestic market. And trade shows are another important venue for us. We, Tucson is our main battlefield each year, right at the beginning of the year. Uh, so we were there, we, you probably see us walking around uh, the multiple shows and talking to the dealers. Uh, we also bring some to our back room, our uh, camera studio uh, at the show to have them talk about their stones. So the, the right side image was Arthur Groom was talking about how to evaluate uh, emerald rough. 
And next one, moving to the last one, is our publication leverage. Now, this is also very important because we, it's just impossible for us to participate in every research, every study that people are doing um, these days in the trade or in the lab. So when that is the case, we have to rely on publication. Uh, so when they publish their paper, we can take that paper because, um, again, our Gems and Gemology Journal um, has a long history and from 1934 uh, till today and it's still going strong, it's going stronger. Um, we can use the articles, we take the content out and we can use their images. Um, there is a transformation has to be done in between. I know some of you might be wondering, um, all these research results, and they're quite technical. And we're, the goal of our curriculum is not to train you, train everybody to become a scientist. That's definitely not our goal. Um, but we have to change all these results to a language, an easier language that can be understandable to our audience, to our students. So we take the principles out of this research results and we deliver it to you in a way that you can understand it and you can even use it in your selling. So another important platform is our website. Now many articles, um, they can, the authors can pick to go to print in GNG or uh, they can put the article on our website. So GNG articles are all peer reviewed, so it's a longer process. And for our web articles, it's a faster process. So a lot of the field reports are actually put on our website. And we rely on this source as well. Uh, we took the content, we are being selective and take the content that are useful to our students to put into the course. And now I wanna give you a specific example uh, so for the past two years, our research scientists, diamond research scientists, published a series of articles about color diamonds. Uh, these were good summary articles for each color, the major color variety, uh, what the color causes are and what the quality distribution based on the sample set that we, GIA has collected. Um, so we put all these articles together. There are four here, but there's another one coming. So all five, uh, we also get a good summary to put into the new course. So in this new course, you will have a, a new chapter actually called the color causes of a uh, fancy color diamonds. So you will definitely learn more about fancy color diamonds in the updated course. And the making of the course, that's not the focus of today's presentation, but it's also very important uh, to us. It's a long process. So subject matter experts put the course assignments together, and then it will go through a long process, a cycle with instructional designers, our graphic designers, um, editors, copy editors, um, and this will be reviewed by experts. And I took this photo because I knew that I'm going to give a talk about how we make the course. And the other day we had a, a meeting, a Zoom meeting, to review one of the new assignments in the Diamond course. And we have Dr. Sherry, and it's probably blocked by the little screens there. And Dr. Steve Shari was helping us to review the assignment and give his suggestions. So it's a long process and we will produce multiple things, the print textbooks, the e-learning course, and also questionnaires, examinations. Our product is very well polished. So here is another a very specific example. We try to use the course to bring the mind to market stories to you. I mean, it's great if you can go to the sources on your own in person to visit a lot of these important sources, but it's not practical for many people in the trade. You might just start your career and you might have other commitment. You cannot go to the field, but you want to deliver the mind to market stories to your customer. How you do it, and you can through our course, 
we try to bring every stone that we, um, you know, every source that we visited, we try to get a mind to market story to you. And sometimes we need to piece, piece things together, <laughs> just not always that smooth, but whenever we have the chance, we'll try to do it. So for example, here is the Mozambique Ruby story, which is one of the most important stories that GIA has followed over the past 10 years. So since 2009, when uh, rubies were found in Mozambique, GIA started to follow the whole involvement of this deposit of the stones, the distribution of the stones. So we went there, you will see the whole story from the deposit, from the washing process, from the evaluation process, all the way down to their auction. Um, so we also had team sent to the auctions that they hosted in Singapore and other locations. We witnessed the process as well. So this way you get the firsthand information directly from GIA, from our reliable trade contacts. And you can deliver the story in your own way to your customers. And we also try to review some of the mysteries for you. Uh, this was the treatment of sapphire I was talking about earlier in Montana. We also had a really detailed uh, presentation about the whole process and why they do this, why they do that. It was well explained in the course. So this is uh, the five books that um, we launched last year, which is a revised color stone course. Um, so part of the content again was quite stable. So we won't change the RI, we won't change the SG, but with a lot of new information of new sources and more in-depth information about treatments. Um, so there are a lot of new things in the revised course. And this is our e-learning platform. E-learning, you will have more media content to help, mainly to help the students to understand the concept better. And I want to spend maybe a couple minutes to talk about the learning experience here. If you enroll with, uh, in GIA courses, uh, if it's on campus, of course, you will learn from our instructors, very experienced instructors. And you also have the opportunity to learn from our research scientists directly. Um, you know, we also invite trade experts, for example, a very well-known Hong Kong designer, Wallace Chen, and he came to our campus and brought his famous pieces here, and the students would have opportunity to talk directly to these big names in the trade. And you will also have your peers visit our campus to share their experience in the trade with you. Um, other than the core curriculum, our um, flagship courses such as diamond diamond grading, we also have continuing education. And I hope at least many of you already enrolled uh, free to SERP. This is a program uh, where every year has eight modules. Uh, each one is on a very specific topic. The content is also sourced from the four major sources I talked about. And we also offer other seminars and short courses. These are fulfilling very specific goals. For example, if you want to know about emerald origin determination, you can take a two-hour seminar. And we're also developing more advanced seminars uh, to cover those topics. So uh, now we are close to the end. Um, I want to let you know that uh, GI education is not just offering the content, uh, the knowledge that you need for your career. It also offers a lifelong connection. So I picked this two photos. One was from uh, 1964, a class graduated from New York campus. And uh, this right side image was a new one. Took, uh, took a couple years ago, we took this image. Oh, generations of gemologists they enter GIA, they took their formal gemology education, and they exit GIA with a solid knowledge base to differentiate themselves with their peers, their competitors. And they also share this lifelong connection with each other, with this huge family called GIA alumni. 
I'm personally part of that, and many of my colleagues are part of that as well. So if you are interested in our education op offerings, you can go to our website, see the catalog, and there's also a little quarterly journal called the GA Education uh, Quarterly. And it has a lot of detailed information of our offerings and some short article, interesting articles as well. So by the end, I really want to quote um, Dr. Gubelin, one of the most, one of the best known GIA graduates. Um, what he said here is basically, you know, gemology is something that you just have to continue to learn because the trade keeps evolving. There are always new things, new treatments, new market trends coming. So there is no stop point for you once you enter the trade. But through GIA education, we hope that through our efforts, we can accelerate you on part of this journey. Uh, we can give you maybe for six months, even for a couple of days, a couple of hours, we can help you to accelerate this process. And now I will take some questions from you. Okay. So we have some good questions. Thanks, Tao, for going through all that. That was super interesting. Uh, it's always nice to see how we can take all this work we're doing and you know make it accessible for, for people. Um, so uh, the first question, we got a few of these was, um, I know you talked a little bit about the CERT pr program, but maybe you can go into a little bit more detail about how GGs who graduated, um, alumni, how they can get some updated information um, and you know even some of the new stuff that we're adding to our diamond and colored stone courses how can they get access to um, the, the current stuff that we're working on yeah um, that's a great question <laughs> it's not very simple to answer so first let's talk about SERP um, that's our you know for now it's one of our major continuing education program and over the over the past at least 10 to 15 years, I don't know the exact date when this started, but um, you, if you are a graduate from GIA, then you have the, you are qualified to take SERP. Uh, that's what the programs requires. Um, these are eight modules, as what I uh, mentioned earlier. I mean, these content are also from exactly the same source as what we do with the course. So. Um, Jenna Smith, who is putting all these modules together, she is also selective. See what's the most interesting happen, interesting thing happen at that moment, and she will put that into the SERP. So that's definitely one very good way to get updated about the trade these days. Um, for our updated courses, that's a longer process. So from putting the course together, getting it reviewed and getting it produced, uh, it's often a two to three year period of time. It can be shorter than that, but that's a good estimate. So it takes a longer time. And um, for that, you have to enroll in the course to see the updated content. Although, uh, some of this might be put into seminars as well. So keep your eyes open on our seminar offerings as well, because you will definitely see some of that information in those seminars. Great. Um, for someone who's new in the industry that, that's just kind of starting and, you know, maybe is not at a super advanced level, where should they start? What e-learning course should they start with? Uh, to, to give them the best kind of intro to gemology? Mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend the, the best to start with is definitely our AJP program, uh, the accredited, uh, accredited jeweler. Applied jewelry. Applied, platform. yeah, we had these two terms. I mean, we, we have to double check, make sure which one is correct. But uh, the AJP diploma, is the best one to start with. This one actually is quite comprehensive because it gives you uh, diamond, the basic knowledge about diamond, about color still, and about jewelry. So for uh, somebody that just start their uh, career, maybe in a jewelry store, maybe as a sales, this is actually a very good starting point and it covers quite a lot of content, just not that in depth 
So it, it can be a stepping stone. You take that, you test the water, you see what, what you are really interested <laughs> after that. And you can either pick the longer course or a more you know, specially designed seminar to focus on certain topics. Okay. Um, you know, what makes GIA different from other gemology schools? Mm, well, that, that's what this talk is about. <laughs> we, we want you to see um, how much GIA invest into the course, the content. Um, for all these field trips, um, all these visits to trade contacts, um, our, even our research scientists, what they do daily here, um, are heavily, inv heavily invested by our company. So this course is, um, I cannot even count like how much effort we, even the production team, to put into the course. And GIA's research team actually is a unique, it's a very unique thing that I don't think any other um, gemological institutions can compete with that. I mean, they have trade information, they have other information, but uh, the research that GIA's research team is doing is what can really differentiate us from others. Okay. Um, is the, are the new uh, updated diamond and colored stone uh, courses currently available for enrollment, are, is that what we're we're yeah. currently using for the <laughs> curriculum? The color stone, the updated one, is now available. So if you are enrolling or you are going to enroll into co graduate color stone program, you will use that new set of textbooks that I showed you in this presentation. Uh, for the diamond, um, you probably still have to wait another year uh, for the new textbooks to come out. Uh, so let's look at 2000, maybe the end of 2021 or the beginning of 2022, <laughs> new courses coming out. Great. Okay, so we're coming up on the end. So I'm just going to wrap up. Um, we got a few questions about scholarships for distance education. We do have those available. So go to our website to see when our scholarship application periods are. Uh, I also wanted to remind everyone that if you're an active uh, participant in the continuing education recognition program uh, that, that Tao was talking about. You get access to these eight interactive mod modules, but you also have access to all the GIA e-learning courses, including Diamond Essentials, Colored Stone Essentials, Diamonds and Diamond Grading, Colored Stones, and Gem Identification. So if you're a GG um, and you're an alumni and you wanted to get access to those current e-learning courses, you do have that available through the CERT program as long as you're an active member. Yeah, that's, that's uh, a very good point. If they are grad GG graduates, they actually can assess the new uh, color stone course through that way, through the SERP. Yeah. Yes. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is some really great information. Um, it's great to see how uh, we're able to continue to offer alumni access to GI education as much as we can. Uh, if you have any other questions for us, uh, please find us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And thank you all for coming. Come again next week where we'll be joined by Dr. Sally Magana, who will tell us everything we need to know about the science behind fancy color diamonds. Bye. Bye.